Record on this computer. Stand by. Good morning. This is Jason Moss with uh, Manufacturing News Network and the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance. And today we got a really cool call lined up, and we're going to be talking about the the Manufacturing Task Force. And the Manufacturing Task Force call, the reason that we put this call together was to be able to bring uh, industry leaders together that wanted to contribute and get involved in the kind of uh, the, the war on Corona. You know, a lot of manufacturers had, had access to or manufactured products that were um that were needed in this battle that we're facing. Uh, we had people, everything from hand sanitizers to gloves, to masks, to, to even ventilators that are manufactured right here in the great state of Georgia. Um, so we, we, we have had some, some, some great success stories, really cool conversations as a result of these calls. And, um, uh, you know, we don't, we don't want that to end today. You know, we we're, we're, we're kind of kicking back in gear and, and getting back to work. I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about that. Um, you know, having governor Kemp kind of free us back up to get back out into the real work, you know, back to the real work of manufacturing. And, um, uh, we know that there's going to be a transition. Obviously there'll be a big transition getting us back into, um, uh, a regular schedule of manufacturing and back into regular operations, but there's still a demand and there's still some needs for PPE and being able to serve our, our first responders and medical folks. Um, and, and I got a great announcement that I'm going to share with you on this call today, but what I'd like to do before we kick that, that part of it off is I'd like everybody to just really, really, really briefly tell us who you are and then how you're connected to either GMA or to these calls. Uh, you know, if this is your first call, first time you get plugged into that, that's cool. But we'd like to kind of figure out who's who in the zoo and, 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 and how we're going to be able to um, um, bring some resources to you. So I'll go ahead and start it out with Pierre. Good morning, Jason, everybody. Uh, morning. My name is Pierre Tangway, and I was a senior executive with Wheelabrator in LaGrange, Georgia. Uh, they manufactured uh, OEM equipment, mm -hmm. a lot of fabrication, machining work. Okay. And uh, actually, this is my first time on the on the task force call. And okay. Wanted to see where I could contribute if I can. Very cool. Glad to have you on board with us. All right. So you're right now. You're a little bit of a free agent. So I'm glad you're able to bring that to the table. And I know that there's going to be a lot of people looking for good good talent as a this different transition. perspective. I'm sorry. A different perspective. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I love it. All right. Uh, I, I'm showing Jerry Mc, uh, McKnight. Yes, hi. I'm Susie McKnight. I'm Jerry's wife. Okay. Um, he's out on a business call, and uh, we're both representatives with uh, Magic um, Enterprises. And uh, I'm new. That I'm a first-time caller, really new to the industry. But I am a nurse of 24 years. Um, I'm a registered nurse. I work at Northeast Georgia Medical Center, and um, I actually became a rep and have sold uh, thousands of masks now. And I would like to talk to you about those masks that I'm selling. Fantastic. And, yeah, we're definitely going to be digging into that here in just a couple minutes. So thank you for being on the call with us. All right, Mr. Gene Kim, glad to have you on the line. Well, this is first first video I think that we've had had on that you've been out of your pajamas. So <laughs> welcome to the Zoom world, brother. <laughs> yeah. Um, so first of all, you know, big shout out to my president that actually said, "Hey, you need a camera on your, uh, your uh, display screen of the office." So not me. I do have a haircut, so that kind of worked out. Uh, so I look much better than I did about two weeks ago. Uh, Bonus. So Kemp for that. Uh, Gene Kim, I'm the uh, general manager of uh, sales and marketing for a company called JX Nippon ANSI. Uh, we're located here in Kennesaw, Georgia. We actually have manufacturing plants in Roanoke, Alabama, and uh, Dalton, Georgia. Okay. Uh, do a lot of different things, but related to COVID-19 and this Georgia Manufacturing Alliance Task Force, it's uh, mostly dealing with uh, composite structures that go into medical apparel, face masks, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, fantastic, fantastic. Glad to have you on the line. All right, Ms. Koki. She's, she's, she's manufacturing margaritas as we speak. <laughs> exactly. Uh, no, I um, I'm in, was originally in the event industry, out of work, so decided to help out GMA and became a scribe and found the need for um, OSHA compliance uh, incentive programs, which I'm now uh, promoting to see a short and give us performance. Okay. So, uh, incentive pro programs attached to OSHA compliance. 
Yeah, right? to, and, and to make employees OSHA compliant, to kind of make, let them do the right cho choice. To encourage them, not to encourage them. Encourage them. To, them. There That's you a good go. Word. I like that. I'm going to write that down. Lead them to be compliant. Them. Roger, lead them to be compliant. Lead them. Lead them. I got you. Cool. Mm -hmm. cool. Go. All right. As a matter of fact, Roger, go ahead and share with us. Uh, I'm Roger Grabman, a registered professional engineer. My company is Grab Innovations and Services. I work with equipment design development and related safety issues. Okay. I'm also the president of the Georgia Society of Professional Engineers. Mm -hmm. We have a program coming up Monday, and it will be added to the events calendar. Okay. Cool, cool, cool. The program okay. is on best practices for engineers under pandemic conditions. That should be a pretty hot topic, for sure. Appreciate you sharing that with us, Roger. All right, Mr. Haddon. As, as many of you know, I'm Colonel Retired Biff Haddon, and I actually work for the Undersecretary of Defense and the Defense Health Agency. I cover the Southeastern United States, and, and I take service members that are coming out of recovery from training injuries or wounds and work with folks exactly like y'all to help place them for future. There are some obvious reasons for that. I've been doing it four years. Uh, so it's, it's really quite an opportunity. And there are 20 of us around the country. We cover all 50 states, all branches of the armed services. So if you ever need and a good employee, just let me know and I may have a candidate for you. Fantastic, that sounds great. All right, thank you, Mr. Alan Nelson. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, Alan Nelson here. Uh, I'm a lawyer with the law firm of Taylor English Duma. Uh, we are a full service law firm. And Jason, as I know, you know, and others on the call will know, we've had a number of our lawyers participating in these calls and providing uh, hopefully <clears throat> hopefully, some good guidance oh, to yeah. folks um, going forward. Yeah, yeah, very cool. Very cool. Glad to have you on the line with us. All right. All right. Uh, a Pearson. All right. Get you uh, the call since the first call I was with um, on with you guys a couple of weeks ago. Really love the organization, campaigning for membership, uh, and so I look forward to um, you know learning more about y'all's industry and what you're what you're tasked with and what you're challenged with. Um, yeah, you know, before I mentioned um, our ability to bring thermal cameras in, mm -hmm. which I think is people are reopening up um, and looking for ways to make sure that their employees are kept safe. Um, I may be able to, you know, either host a webinar um, mm -hmm. for the organization or something like that, and bring our experts to you who are the experts in manufacturing. Okay, and let me get your name, name and company Amy. again. Amy Pearson, ADT National Accounts. Okay, perfect. Thank you, ma'am. Appreciate. You. Appreciate you being online with us. All yeah. right, Mr. McShane. Thank you, Jason. Um, I'm Mike McShane. I'm in the industrial real estate business, but my background is mechanical engineering in the energy sector. Okay. So uh, as Koki is worrying about you know, what's going on the shop floor, I worry more about the building and the facility. Mm -hmm. So we've been doing work with Energy Star, LEED, and uh, what's going to happen as far as the investment in changing buildings to be compliant um, is a, a concept called cost segregation. Mm -hmm. It has to do with the tax ramifications when you modify a facility to go into the CARES Act. So hopefully what I can bring to the table is you think about the facility separate from the manufacturing floor and what are the immediate and long-term issues that are uh, the CARES Act. Okay, perfect, perfect, good deal, good deal. Appreciate you being online with us. All right, Ms. Murphy. I am Michelle Murphy with Benefit Resources. We do um, employee benefits in the group space from 50 to 300. Um, I enjoy being a part of these calls. They're Full of information. I've been sharing them as much as I can on different social media because I think uh, I think the information is promising. Just to let anybody know that um, we're still moving, we're still producing, we're still. It's not as doom and gloom as um, some of the media outlets would want you to believe. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Hopefully, we're bringing some good stuff to the table and get folks getting folks engaged in different ways. Beautiful. Thanks. 
All right, LD. Morning, everybody. Um, my name is LD. I'm with Fast Signs here in Snellville. And um, as far as how we're trying to contribute right now is, is getting everybody back up to speed with any type of signage that they might need for reopening um, new guidelines for employees, new guidelines for customers, vendors. Um, I feel it's all about uh, just communicating what it is, it, your expectations, um, so that uh, whether it is employee, vendor, or customer coming into your facility, that everybody feels safe um, and is practicing, you know, whatever needs to be practiced to be open. Um, we have also changed some of our equipment around to be able to uh, help help with the reopening and keep with the guidelines. We are making a lot of countertop shields, um, using our acrylic in a lot of different ways, hanging shields, face shields, um, you name it, and we got a shield for you. <laughs> so, I love it. I love it. Beautiful. Uh, yeah. Thank you. I'm glad to have you on the line. Mm -hmm. All right. Mr. Taylor. Good morning, Jason and everybody else. Um, I'm JT with Adhesive and Equipment. Uh, our contribution is that we have a hard surface disinfectant that we're offering to distribute uh, really at manufacturer's cost and comes in a five gallon pail. So if you know anybody that needs it, uh, that's how we play in this uh, COVID game. Fantastic. Fantastic. Glad to have you online with us. It's great to be here. All right. Beautiful. Mr. Don, what's going on, buddy? That's the first time I've seen that video, buddy. I believe I'd have seen that before. I'm digging it. Uh, that's a leftover from last fall when I went out to Iowa, where I grew up, and did some farming. And I, yeah. COVID just seemed to be a good reason to keep it. Yeah, sounds good to me. <laughs> uh, my name's Don Hepner. I'm executive partner and CEO of Paladin Associates. We're a small uh, boutique management services company, and we help our clients uh, reduce the cost of their purchased goods and services. Okay. Uh, typically indirect expenses, anything from uh, office supplies to telecommunications, cell phones, transportation, packaging, insurance policies, all that miscellaneous stuff that uh, mid mid-sized companies typically um, uh, don't have all the resources and skills to 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 uh, procure that those items those spend categories at the most optimal price and value from their suppliers. So we help companies get their suppliers competitive um, and get more value from their supply chain. Okay. And we do, it, we do it on a performance fee basis. Uh, so there's no risk, no upfront cost. We simply share the uh, savings. So if you know of any companies that would like to reduce uh, their cost of operations, um, let me know. Very cool. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Don. All thanks, right. uh, Jason. Thanks for uh, doing these. Uh, this is the first one I managed to get uh, to get on, but I, I appreciate all you do to, to get the word out. Everybody I appreciate stay that. Safe. Yeah, it's been been interesting. I'll tell you that. It's a whole new whole new space that we're in. All right. All right, Mr. Jason Lamers, what's going on in your world, brother? I know he often has has assistants in his office helping him uh, that are uh, can be a little distracting. So he's got a camera off. That might be a sign. All right, Mr. Tom Lindsay. Tom, can you hear us? Oh yeah, sorry, <clears throat> sorry about that, and I apologize for not being on the video. I'm. I'm actually in a location where the background is too strange. Uh, <laughs> it just didn't give me a good picture. But uh, our, our firm, uh, we're uh, engineering and manufacturing recruiting. Okay. And um, uh, to, uh, to Roger's uh, point, I'm, I'm a recovering engineer myself. Mm -hmm. um, we're helping the engineering and manufacturing people find good people because okay. the, the need for good people hasn't gone away just because we've put a lot of things on pause. Right. Thanks. Okay, good deal. Well, I'm glad to have you online with us. All right, we had somebody from 312. I don't have a name attached to that. If you want to uh, open up and, and share with us who you are going once. 
you win twice. All right. So, all right. So, uh, so uh, thank you all for, or, or for playing a part today and, and, and being on the line and sharing kind of what's going on. Uh, it is an interesting time guys. I mean, you know, uh, having the green light to get back to work, uh, although it'd be different than we're accustomed to, we're going to be having to deal with social distancing and reconfigure manufacturing spaces and, 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 you know, depending on which news you watch, you know, um, uh, I've, I've taken a, I've taken a sabbatical from news for the month of May, which is, we're going to see how that turns out. Cause, cause that has been my entertainment is like, I took it as a job. I was watching everything as much as I could. And I was just consuming and consuming it. Just, you know, <sighs> overload. Um, you'll find if you know me and get to know me for long, you figure out that I, I live my life a full throttle or full break. You know, there's not a lot of in between and, and, and sometimes you can get a little, you know, you can get wound up in some stuff. And, um, I took it as a mission because we're doing these calls to make sure that I'm had every bit of information that I could, that I could gather to bring to these calls. Um, so we're going to take a different vantage point. You know, um, if there's something urgent in the meteor is on the way to Lawrenceville, Georgia, to, 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 you know, to knock the world off of its axis, please let me know ahead of time. But outside of that, I'm just not going to spend a lot of time on it. I'm going to focus on you guys. I'm going to focus on what we can do as a community, what we can do as an organization to help uh, get our manufacturers back up to speed safely, get our folks back to work safely. You know, we do have a relaunch and retool call that we're doing on Thursday. Um, and I'm, I'm really, we got some really great traction on that, had some great dialogue about what companies are doing and how they're doing it. But this call is, is what can we do as an industry to bring the tools together to help manufacturers and the first responders and medical folks get the tools that they need to combat this, this, this war on the coronavirus. And again, based on this, the, the news feed that you get, um, we may or may not have already gone past our peak in Georgia. So you depend again, depending on what day it is, what time of the day it is and who you're talking to and which, you know, which professional knows all the answers, who knows where we're at, but we still may need some, uh, some, some help in the medical piece. We're for sure going to do this one more week. We may transition this call into a different call following that, but we're going to do one more week of the task force because I know that we've made some great connections and we've had some huge successes um, um, being able to pair needs in the marketplace with suppliers. You know, we're going to talk a little bit about that. There's a couple of you guys have, have already, you know, have benefited from that. And I'd like for you to share your story in a minute. But, um, but part of the reason that we set this call up is because we saw that there was a need in the marketplace. People were calling us and saying, Hey, we got some M95 masks. What do we do with them? Or we could retool to do whatever this is that, that, that they said on the news they needed that day. And that's cool. And I'm stoked about the response that we have had in the manufacturing space. Um, so we had to do something. And we, you know, we're kind of not waiting on the state. For, for those of you that don't know, we are a for-profit industry association, not affiliated with any government entity. We don't have a penny of tax dollars in what we do. We are 100% supported by membership and sponsorship, and we don't do any lobbying. So we're not engaged down at the Capitol. I mean, we go down to the Capitol once a year to take a picture with the governor because it's just cool. But outside of that, we don't get into the politics stuff. But we saw that there was a need in the marketplace to be able to, to gather this data together and connect it with the people that needed it. So that was the formation of the task force a month and change ago. Um, we built a, a, a web page uh, and I'm going to share with you. I'm going to share my screen with you real quick and show you a little bit about what's going on. Um, stand by. Share screen. Um, that one. Okay. Okay, so uh, before we do that, I'm going to share my screen with you and let you know, again, we are a for-profit entity that's, that survives for our mem through our members and sponsorships, and we are thankful for each one of these members. I'm going to kind of go through these so you can kind of get, a, get an eyeball on who's, play who's players in GMA and how they're engaged. These companies commit to help support the industry and support us in what we do. Uh, again, we got some Taylor English folks online. Thank you for, for for participating, not just as a sponsor, but as a as as a you know 
um, industry expert in the space in the legal side as it impacts manufacturers. So these are some of the companies that are engaged with us as sponsors, and we're, we're thankful for every one of these guys. It means it, it allows us to do what we do. Um, but what we found, um, and I'm just going to kind of navigate you through our web page just a little bit, is we found that manufacturers wanted to support in some way. And some of them had materials that were available. So what we did was um, un under the Corona Info, we built a little landing page. Basically, these are the things that um, that are needed. I think I'm at the, I'm at the wrong standby. Um, under our news tab, there was, there was a, a list of products um, Oh, I, I don't already changed the page. Sorry about that, guys. But there was a list of products that were needed by the state or that was identified by the state that we needed. Um, and so we built the landing page for that. This is the task force page. I apologize. It is still here. Uh, so this is the task force. This is kind of one of the earlier calls. These are the items that were needed. And we built this little spreadsheet so that manu uh, manufacturers could, could list their products. We got a lot, of, a lot of response. A lot of companies put information on here. Uh, about the same time we launched ours, the state launched theirs. There was a little bit of confusion about the, the dynamics. The state only wanted information if you had pallets full or trailers full of this material that, that they were ready to buy. They weren't looking for the small companies that were supporting the initiative. So we, again, continued this task force um, to, to help make those connections. The call last week, we made some good connections. And, and this week, I'm really, I'm really excited to share with you um, that, the, that the state has really stepped up in a big way and they've provided some new tools. So if you go on under the uh, Georgia Manufacturing Alliance under the news tab, you'll see a brand new button. It says Corona uh, COVID-19 supplies. This COVID-19 supplies is this is this is provided by the uh, Georgia Department of Economic Development. That's the organization that was tasked with connecting supplies with supply. I mean, supplies with needs in the marketplace. This tells you a little bit about it. But um, if you um, want to have your company listed, this is a this is a list of and I've printed it out here so you can see the hard copy. This is a list in 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 of it's like nine pages i think of suppliers as manufacturers and as businesses are getting back to work they're finding that they need to be able to access resources um and there's all over the map as far as who's got face masks who's got face shields who's got the respirators ventilators uh hand sanitizer and um they have done a fabulous job of putting this list together so i'm gonna click on the suppliers list this takes you right to a pdf um these are the companies and the products that are currently available. Now there is a massive, thank you for our lawyers for this unbelievable disclaimer. <laughs> um, but, uh, and, and this states that this list was developed by the Department of Economic Development, but is in no way endorsing any of these companies or the products or the process or any of that. So, but it's just a list of companies that have raised their hand and said, we have supplies that could be beneficial in the space. And, and if you'll see that the, um, uh, the list includes everything from ventilators to hand sanitizer to whatever, and they're listed, I'm through <laughs> interesting how they list it, but they sorted it by city. So there's nobody gets any special preference unless you happen to live in Albany. But, um, <laughs> uh, but, but they've listed all these products. So Solvay's in here, uh, several of our members are in here. So if you kind of go through, it's really cool that they put this list together and it gives you specifically what the products are, um, a link to their website and where they're located. Um, I am, again, thrilled beyond measure. I think they did a fantastic job of knocking this out of the park. So our guys at the uh, economic development, hands down, great job, you know, um, and they are gonna be updating this. So. I'm going to flip this back over. How you navigate to that is you go to the news tab and then the second button down, it says, um, um, second button down is COVID-19 suppliers. I've copied this. I have copied this like directly from the state's webpage. Um, I've changed one word here. It says we at the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance, and I need to correct that spelling uh, or capitalize that, are proud along with uh, this is like the only thing I changed on that page 
but this link goes to the list. If your company provides those resources and would like to be on that list, if you click on this form, this takes you to the states page and you fill out and they, they do a really good job of describing where you need to get connected. So one of the places that you want to get connected is you want to go to, if you want to donate, donate and you connect directly with the folks in your community. So if you got a hospital, a nursing home, if you're making face masks and sewing them up at the house, bless your heart, we want you to keep doing that because there's a need for that. And if you want to donate those, you just reach out to your local nursing home or hospital or first responders or go by the fire station and drop them off or the police state, you know, so our first responders, there is still a need in the market for those. If you want to donate those in small quantities, if you want to donate in large quantities, there's a listing here, right? So if you want, and, and, and you just click through the different links, um, there is a place that if you don't want to get into the direct distribution of small quantities to donate, there's a website here that'll walk you through this, Health Connection South. Um, and then there is access to, uh, again, if you want to have your company's products listed on this page, then you fill out this information. Now, I'm not responsible. I'm not affiliated. I'm not connected at any level with this list other than we're reposting the information that's on this page. I'm not putting anybody's name on it or taking anybody's name off of it. This is through the state. They manage it. I'm just pointing you to this is where you find your information. And if you've got a ton of face masks or face shields or ventilators or gloves or whatever, and you want to sell them, the qualification, I will tell you that one thing that I read through as I was going through the qualification is it says that if your company would like to sell to GEMA or to other potential buyers, the FDA approved medical supplies listed below and your company does not require payment up front, those are the two qualifications then you can fill the information out here. And this tells, you know, what the items are that you have. And basically it just turns it on and off in that spreadsheet. And they're going to republish that spreadsheet, I think, pretty, pretty regularly. So, so I'm, I'm thrilled with having that as a resource for us and for GMA and for manufacturers. Because again, the manufacturers are calling me and some of them are saying, hey, we need this. And then some manufacturers are saying, we got 15,000 gallons of hand sanitizer. What do we do with it now? Um, uh, I think that there is going to be um, a bullwhip effect in the supply chain as it relates to PPE. I don't see how we're not going to have that. I mean, every, you know, everybody that I know that knows how to sew has been sewing face masks, right? And I don't know how many you're going to need. And I don't know for how long we're going to need it. I may be, I may be, you know, I may be wrong that we may have a perfect level of supply and demand for PPE, but I got a feeling there's going to be, <laughs> there's going to be some excess inventory, you know, but I don't know when that excess inventory is going to be. If it may be a year out, if we, if we're all required to wear face masks when we go in public for the next year, then that's a different demand. So I don't know what that looks like, but I do know that I am again, thrilled beyond measure that the leaders at the state level at the Georgia Department of Economic Development have developed this resource for us to be able to access the tools that we need, but also sell the tools if you and sell the resources and, and provide those to the people that need them. Way better than anything that I could have come up with. And this is not the business that we're in anyway. So, so again, we're thankful for those folks to do that. Give them a big round of applause. Um, this is the disclaimer that's in that spreadsheet as well. Again, they're just releasing themselves from any liability at any level of, you know, for the product or the sales or any of that stuff. So um, I would venture to say that if you're, you know, if companies are not going to abide by um, honorable business conditions, they probably won't maintain their access to this list or be able to be on there. if The state gets too much feedback about folks ripping people off. So that being said, um, uh, that's, like I said, I'm really stoked about having that as a resource. So that's, that's the big share for the day. And, um, you know, I, I, I know that, um, each of us have different challenges that we're facing, but I believe that everybody that's on this call, I, I, I that's part of the reason we put this thing on Facebook live, excuse me, YouTube live. And that's part of the reason that we archive these calls 
is we will gather this information, this video, if somebody wants to watch the whole thing, we encourage people to feel free to rewatch it. You know, we save it on YouTube so they can watch it as many times as they want to, or if they just want to get the, the cliff notes. So we have a cliff note review on our page and then we have an in-depth review that koki does and gives us all the details of the call and kind of who who shared the bits and pieces she is she is fabulous um <laughs> and and so so people can consume it at any level that they want to one of the other pieces um before i before i transition and kind of get some feedback is we're looking at uh we want to make sure that we serve our manufacturing community in the place that they receive information with the right people. So by a show of hand, this is the Jason Moss Redneck poll on YouTube. I mean, <laughs> by a show of hands, who regularly subscribes to and listens to podcasts from the industry? Raise your hand if you would. If you listen to podcasts, got a couple folks, couple folks, podcasts, are you podcast listeners? I'm not. But thank you for that, that feedback. So one of the things that we're looking at doing, we've again, we've launched the YouTube channel, Manufacturing News Network, but we're also looking at copying the audio track out of this and, and creating a Manufacturing News Network podcast so that you can listen to it in a different format. You know, lot, lots of folks tell me that podcasts are the way to go and, and, and people can consume the, the information differently. That's one of the pieces we're looking to possibly bring on this, but we want to make sure that there's, you know, a good, good return on that if, 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 if folks want to do it. So, um, so with that, um, again, part of the reason that we do this is to share best practices. We want to make sure that we share wins and losses, any challenges that we face on this, on this space. Um, and so what I want to do is I'm just going to open the call up. Um, you guys kind of, kind of let me know what your, what your thoughts are about the, the, the master list, uh, provided by the Georgia Department of Economic Development, how you see that impacting your business. If you want to list your products that are not listed there, or if you want to you know, have access to stuff, tell me a little bit about what you guys see in there and um, uh, give, me, give me a little bit of feedback on, on the list so far. I love it. It's very detailed, organized. It's actually in some kind of sequence, mm -hmm. even though it's by city. It's great. Love it. Perfect. Perfect. Well, Jason, I think that's a that's a good idea and might be something for you to think about for the GMA members membership. Get everybody, all the members on. What do they do? What do they? Uh, what services and products do mm -hmm. they sell? Um, might be a good reference for GMA. Okay. Okay. You talking about outside of the Corona stuff? Just listing yeah. of the products and services. Okay. Yeah, okay, just yeah. for all the GMA members, you know, eventually all the uh, manufacturers in Georgia, uh, that's part of the issue is finding, finding uh, the companies that, that want to buy your service or your products and right. vice versa, finding companies to buy from. So. Right, right. And that's, that's, that's one of the things that we're doing through our directory online, as well as the print director, because we're trying to break that out by industry, um, uh, uh, areas of expertise. So that's kind of how we got the directory broken up as well. Uh, so, so, you know, printed version might, you know, we do that in January and July. Um, there's, there's some, we're, we're looking at maybe doing some, some retooling of that uh, this year, obviously because of the coronavirus, but, uh, but yeah, I'll definitely take that in, 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 in mind. My point is L online, it's more searchable. Right. Yeah. Your directory is great, except hard to look through a hundred pages, you know, for right. things you want. Yeah. Just a thought. Okay, cool. Thanks. All right, Ms. LD, what are you, what are you thinking, girl? Um, well, from the Thursday meeting, we had the relaunch of the round table. Uh -huh. um, so going in line with, with what Don was just talking about, but maybe more specifically to the guidelines that we were talking about and the certifications of what, what it's going to look like going forward um, when you have uh, you know, your, your trucking companies coming to manufacturers, all those new guidelines and what the requirements might be. The, the style of that list that was, the, that was online, I think that that might be sort of helpful, a helpful way to look at, okay, what, what are the guidelines and what do we need and which one of these companies within the GMA um, has access to provide those things. 
Oh, um, wow. I never thought about repurposing the, that format for the right because you know when when we talk about that on thursday yeah depending on what what those guidelines are it might be a really cool um way to display how people can quickly get these things set in place mm -hmm. just just thought i mean because yeah. I, I i agree with don that's a, it's a easy on the eyes in a great format and um i do like that it is by um alphabetical order and it has zip codes and stuff because of the membership that's spread all across Georgia. Right. You know, being able to find those vendors, it doesn't matter if you have multiple people supplying the same things because, it, you know, we're all spread out everywhere. Right. Um, so that might be a, a, a good way to convey that information um, for, for our discussion on Thursday as Very well. Very cool. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I want to make sure we address that for sure. Sure. All right. Mm -hmm. Cool, cool, cool. Um, all right, um, Mr. Lamers, tell us, brother, what's going on in your space? I put you right on the spot. Good morning, everybody. It has been a kind of a hectic day here at the home office. Um, don't really have any uh, updates on the manufacturing list. I'm seeing stuff on here that we're you might. definitely going to be using so mm -hmm. something it's a resource i'm definitely going to pass along make sure that we have it back at the office okay and i appreciate you sharing that sweet sweet so later in the day so i'm gonna help make you guys famous for for your contribution today so thank you for being part of this because later in the day i'm going to take this call and i'm going to put it as a highlight for the calls of the week um and and then have a link back to that page and a link back to the YouTube video of it, of course. Um, and, and, and I think that this will be something every manufacturer in the state, whether they're the GMA member or not, they'll be able to benefit from, because I know there's some, some folks struggling trying to find some of these supplies. So that being said, hopefully this will be a great resource that, that, that will help people get back on board and back in track you know, um, and, and back up to production. So I appreciate, appreciate that, Jason. We'll, we'll be passing this along. And once you get that email, feel free to share that email out through your team as well. I will try to make it in a format that will be easy to pass along. So perfect. All right, Mr. Kim, what you see in there, brother? Yeah, I mean, in our case, um, uh, let me start with the bad news first. <laughs> okay. Um, so uh, the, the bad news is that uh, there's, there's obviously a, a, uh, a kink in the, the supply chain in which uh, for us to make some of the composite materials for medical apparel, uh, we're hearing and getting quotes of basically something like a 20 week. Wow. Yeah. So, <laughs> um, so some of the larger volume um, quotes that we're getting, I mean, we're at a point where we actually have to turn people away. Okay. Because uh, either that or it's like, let's do it in six months. You know? <laughs> I don't think that's exactly what they want to hear. Yeah, just hold your breath. It'll be okay. <laughs> yeah, it, it's, um, so, so that's kind of where we are. Uh, on the flip side, the good news is that the ones that we can support, uh, we are able to support. And through this particular um, uh, uh, task force call, uh, we're continuously connected with uh, a variety of different industries, a variety of different industries um, in, in which both supports the COVID-19 and some of our global businesses. So, you know, it's been a very uh, you know, fruitful call for us, and which is part of the reason why I'm continuously on here, uh, talking about our services, talking about what we can support. Um, and, we can, and as I say that we have a kink in the supply chain, uh, we still have materials for uh, what we consider that smaller uh, form factor. So whether it's masks or hairnets or shoe covers or things of that nature, uh, we can still support that industry. When it comes to suits and gowns, you know, we have you know, somewhat of a bottleneck, but we still uh, are supporting World England, for instance, that you uh, introduced us to. Uh, we are still in discussions with a lot of different uh, companies that either produce masks or hair covers or something similar uh, in Georgia, but other Southeastern states for that matter. 
Very cool. Very cool. I love to hear the success stories. I mean, I'm glad we're able to connect you guys to World Emblem and that that's working out well. And, 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 um, you know, I think that this might be, you know, I mean, feel free to, feel free to always point back to GMA because we, we, we love the love that we get from the space on referrals. But, uh, you know, this might be a great resource for you to reach out to the, some of the companies that are listed there, you know, that are doing, you know, gowns and, 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 and that sort of thing and let them know that you got raw materials that, could be beneficial that that are that are sourced locally because you you know that some of the folks on this list are dying to find folks in the supply chain like you said if you got materials i don't think anybody in the state of georgia needs to have any kind of inventory soon i think we all, we all need to sell everything that's out there you know so perfect so if i would feel free to reach through that yes ld um i just wanted to give a shout out uh, for a connection made last week um, and I was on all three calls last week, so I know he was on two of the three. I wasn't sure if it, this one, Ryan Carver. Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah, he reached out to me um, to get uh, new COVID guidelines uh, for a, another business that he runs. He has uh, batting cages. Uh, okay. So for, for the kids and the new uh, guidelines that they'll need to take for social distancing um, once they reopen. So thank you for the, the connection. And, um, yeah, it's a... It's a good place to to make these contacts very cool mm -hmm. very cool thanks i appreciate that yeah and if you guys have those i mean that really does if you wouldn't mind you know shooting us an email or, or or you know uh any of those things really helps us build that uh build that arsenal to, to to what gma is doing in the marketplace and how we can help the the community the more you know um validation that gives to to all the efforts that we're putting into, into this so um i do have i have a couple of requests for you is is you know, we, if, if you're being on here, if you, if you would share that comment on, if you go to Google and then Google Georgia Manufacturing Alliance and you'll see our company come up. If you give us a review on Google, that would be fantastic. And then also on the new Manufacturing News Network on YouTube, just go to YouTube Manufacturing News Network and subscribe to that news feed. And then as we're throwing these things out, you guys will get, anytime we go live, you'll get a notification that GMA is going live with a call, you know, feel free to plug in with that. So, and eventually when I get smart enough and can figure out the podcast world, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to have that resource available on podcast for those of you that like to consume your, your information that way. So um, again, we're, we're, we're trying to figure out how best to serve you guys um, uh, having this foundational call to do the task force. I know we've made some connections in the space. We're continuing to, to try to figure out, we don't want anybody to have to go out of state to get anything if, if we make it here or have access to it here. We want to keep it right here in Georgia. And, and I think by connecting the suppliers, the manufacturers, the, the, um, and, and the customers all together here, I believe that there's going to be a, a growth of manufacturing in, in the state of Georgia like nobody's business. GMA for the past 12 years have been focused on making Georgia the most well-connected manufacturing community in the country. And we have done that. I mean, nobody else. I get, I get people from all, I mean, tons of other states reaching out to us saying, how are you doing that? And why are you doing that? <laughs> Honestly, they're asking, how are we getting revenue? Which we hadn't figured that piece out yet. But <laughs> it's like, we're doing this because it's the right thing to do. It's about you know, you know, supporting our community. It, that's what it's about. And, and so, uh, you know, several companies, uh, um, actually just this morning, uh, Michigan re reached out to me and said, you know, can, can you give us some guidance on that? So I'm, I'm thankful that we're going to be able to, um, you know, we're going, we're going to start seeing some different faces and different names from different States, you know, auditing these calls to figure out how Georgia's doing it. Cause they see us, you know, Georgia's leading the pack, baby. They're like, what do our manufacturers need to do? To get this back going, I'm like, well, buy from Georgia. <laughs> pretty, pretty, pretty easy. We got it, right? <laughs> we'll, we'll help you out on that one. Um, so, but, but again, it's about this, you know, building this community and giving, giving you the service on those. So, um, uh, so we are uh, trying to, again, you know, whatever we can do, however we can serve you guys, that's, that's what we're committed to doing. And, um, um, uh, I did have a couple. <laughs> A uh, couple, a couple of great questions on that. Uh, I did want to open this up and say, if it now, now, um, it's is it Amy McKnight, McKnight, or is it right? Is it Miss McKnight? Amy always, 
<laughs> Amy. Okay. Yeah. I got you. Amy Pearson. I got you. Okay. Cool. 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 I'm glad to have you online. You said that you got some stuff as far as doing some, some um, heat monitoring of employees. We, do. we have some um, thermal cameras. You know, I told you on the last call, right. we were vetting out several different manufacturers. And so we've landed on two to three manufacturers that are out there and available to um, provide these thermal cameras okay. so that when you're coming in, you know, during shift change, I've got a customer that's going to use it in a call center. Okay. Um, Cause if their call center shuts down, you know, because someone comes in and gets sick, then that's really bad news. So right, and they're jammed um, up right on the top of each other. Exactly. So, you know, whether it's a turnstile where you, you know, kind of shuttle people in one by one, but the thermal camera will um, indicate a, a temperature and then helping customers provide, all right, so what's the next step? We have, we have a positive read, you know, body temperature is higher than it should be. What do we do next? Whether it's taking them into a separate room and then um, testing them with a real thermometer mm -hmm. or what. And so that's part of our consultative approach with this um, to provide these cameras, but also help companies provide, you know, kind of a um, protocol around those cameras because you can't just set the camera up there there's got to be someone sitting there by the camera reading all the effects right as the people come through so uh, more complex than uh, we would like it to be um, but we're out there and we've got some solid um, manufacturers that we can present and provide those cameras right it's like the little eject button on a production if they come in and they just just kicks them out of the line just is that what it is it just kicks them <laughs> <laughs> think <laughs> we might get in trouble for that jason i'm not sure that's why we don't have an hr department at gma I mean, oh, okay okay we're just not gonna ld gets that like <laughs> anybody but <laughs> yeah it probably wouldn't work out too good yeah probably not all right so keep us posted on that and as you find those again i would encourage you to you know put that as a is a possibility uh, on on the list that the state's providing so well, that's, i read that list very carefully and i didn't see any um kind of thermal cameras listed so i i can i can do that yeah, I think we hey, and, and, hey, Jason, if I may, just very briefly, um, and Amy, this was not a setup at all, but um, <clears throat> Amy, you and I have not met yet, so hello, but uh, mm -hmm. again, Alan Nelson here, Taylor English. We just did a, um, I just did a, with two of my colleagues, a conference for some construction companies that are clients on, a, on the uh, privacy and security issues around use of cameras and, and AI in the workplace. Mm -hmm. uh, all mm -hmm. happened before COVID-19 lockdown. Right. Uh, but but I, I would love Amy to have a conversation at some point about how we may be able to partner and kind of what you guys are doing, because I know you guys know all about that, but just yeah. kind of have a conversation around that about what our folks are doing and, and what our clients are doing. And uh, and again, for anybody else on the call, uh, uh, as I said, we, we've done a good bit of work on the legal aspects of that and how people need to think about it because they're, they're you know, there are a lot of privacy issues around it. There are definitely things you can work through, but you got to be aware of. Absolutely. You got to be aware and have a plan, you know, that's right. about mm -hmm. having a plan. Cool. That's right. So great. Um, I'm going to send you my cell phone number through the chat. Perfect. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. yeah, for sure. Guys, if you have not done that yet, please go ahead and key in your name, phone number, and email over in the chat. Uh, but, but, uh, so, so that way we'll be able to have a, a record of that. If you hadn't able, uh, got connected that way, we'll, we'll see if we can. Also, Amy, I'm not sure if you were part of the Thursday uh, discussion, but that might be a good uh, meeting for you to jump on. Is that the um, round table? Uh -huh. Yeah. Okay. I yeah. missed that one. Listen, we've been inundated with training so that we know what we're talking about with these thermal cameras. Um, so I did miss the Thursday and I missed the Friday happy hour. Thing. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> I, was, I had to have plenty of happy hour over the weekend, but um, yes, I will attend those as, as often as I can and, and bring that up. You know, and as I said, we can do a free webinar even if just for this group. Mm -hmm. uh, Les Paul is one of my subject matter expert, experts. Mm -hmm. You can come in and just explain the concept, explain what we're doing and able to bring, you know, to our clients. And then if it leads to anything, great. But I always believe, you know, information's power. So yeah. the more informed we can be, the, the better leadership we can provide. Cool, cool, cool. Great. Thank you so much. All right, Yarvin, glad to have you on the, on the on line with us. Tell us a little bit about what's going on in your space, buddy. What's it looking like? Talking to me? Yes. Hey, um, we are um, uh, working hard with, uh, we just finished a project with Coke, we're doing some stuff with Kroger, working with other companies to help them reduce the fixed cost uh, through our uh, LED um, light replacement. It's one of those, paying the lighting, paying the utility costs is one of right. those fixed costs that uh, people carry on paying no matter what. 
Mm -hmm. And so uh, being able to reduce that by a uh, large percentage, uh, 30, 40, 50 percent uh, of the total electric cost is quite significant for some uh, companies. And then we've been helping uh, the state of Georgia with PPE supplies. Mm -hmm. um, I have more than 20 plus years experience in the medical industry prior to the LED industry and uh, have a lot of resources. So we've been supplying some of the hospitals with uh, different PP supplies. And we also are bringing in a, um, uh, much like the arch that's in the airport for the, the is a metal detector. Uh -huh. So a similar arch uh, that we're manufacturing soon uh, that uh, very quickly reads the uh, very high sensitivity, the temperature reading hmm. of um, people as they walk through the arch and uh, will alarm, much like the uh, uh, magnetic uh, testing in the airport, it will alarm if somebody has a temperature that's too high. And so um, obviously uh, we also have the thermal uh, cameras uh, with the face recognition and all kinds of stuff. I think there's a lot of companies today that are, that are um, uh, offering that, especially from China, right? But um, the uh, the arch, I think, is also an interesting aspect in terms of walking through entrances and things like that uh, that we can uh, potentially offer in the near future. We're evaluating. Cool, cool, cool. I love it. People are getting very creative. I think that's you know, I mean, the more that we can, the more that we can keep as much of this mm -hmm. business right here in Georgia in our backyard. I mean, the better. You know, I mean, I think yeah. that's one of the big pieces that we want to make sure that we that we open up new channels of supply and yep. um, and support each other support each other here for sure absolutely so yeah very cool thanks for being online with us all right miss mcknight well, she might have stepped away for just a minute but uh with mad okay there you go yeah. tell us a little bit about what's going on in your space all right. Well, um, I have actually gotten into the mass business within the last couple of months, um, a lot of it due to the COVID. And um, we had regulations at that uh, Northeast Georgia Medical Center where nurses were required to wear a mask before entering the hospital. Okay. And the hospital, not only those um, that are supplied by the hospital during uh, work hours, but um, so um, I actually got in contact. I'm a representative with um, Magic Tea. And it's a, it's a fabric mask, which a lot of people love because it's very comfortable, lightweight. Right. It's, comfortable. Um, it's got a cotton inside lining to it. The mask itself, we have two different types, some with a really soft ear band that goes around and one with an ear hole in it. And uh, the nurses absolutely love them. I've been selling a lot of them at work. And so uh, I decided to venture out this morning at, at nine o'clock and I called you and um, had to set everything up this morning to be able to be able uh, to be able to be in on this uh, conference. But um, I'd like to show them to you if you- Sure, sure. yeah. Okay. Uh, they come packaged and uh, they come packaged with two in a package. Okay. All that up for you. And this is this is nanotechnology in these masks. These masks nanotechnology is silver. I'm not sure if you okay. if you're aware of what silver does, but it actually helps to fight bacteria. It has an antimicrobial in it. Mm -hmm. um, it um, and silver is they put it on wound patients. They actually use it on the end of Foley catheters and mm -hmm. it down the bacterial count. Um, but quite comfortable. Open up a quick package. Comes two in a package. Okay. Cool. And if you order those direct uh, from you online, how do you do delivery? What's your distribution? Like I said, we just got into the business. Um, we get lots of telephone calls and emails uh, regarding these. We're selling them to manufacturing companies um, just within the last month. And okay. Uh, okay, but I wanted to show you these are the newest ones that we got in. We have the American flag on the side. Nice. Flag is actually kind of protected during shipping, peels off. Okay. But here's the here's the cotton on the inside. Mm -hmm. Very soft. Um, we it's got a little bit of give. To it. Mm -hmm. it's really nicely, the elastic is quite nice. We're finding that and see how it cups underneath the face. Mm -hmm. it comes up very high, so there's not a lot of airspace here. It's nicely and um, 
we're finding that the nurses that are making these for the hospital, that this elastic, they're finding hard, uh, they're getting, uh, uh, well, the elastic itself is a little bit hard, causes breakdown behind the ear, right. and it's really hard to get a custom fit. With the right. Ear. So um, the ones that are making them are buying these now. <laughs> they, they really like them. And we also have one for men. Mm -hmm. It also comes in a two pack. It has an ear hole and it's for bigger faces. Right. And I'm going to see. Yeah, our, uh, our security guards and the police force at, at Gainesville really enjoy these. And okay. Got it on. And this one comes up. It's got the cloth around the ears, so you absolutely, absolutely get no breakdown whatsoever from these. Interesting. Super soft. Um, well, yeah, if you'll, if you'll over in the notes, I mean, in the, in the um, chat box, if you give us your contact information, um, I'm sure that there'll be some folks that, that have an interest in plugging into that. And the other side is, is, is go through that web page again. And if you want to have your products listed on there, um, you know, go through that process because because um, there will be tons of we're going to be driving a ton of traffic to that spreadsheet um, mm -hmm. and, and letting folks know. And as that gets updated, I've got that link to the, the state's page so that as the state updates it, it automatically will update it on our website as well. So I'm pretty, um, pretty, pretty pleased with seeing how that thing is set up. And I'm, I'm hope, hopefully you'll, you guys will be able to, if you've got product, we don't want you to end up with any inventory as this thing, you know, kind of transitions, hopefully back to us not wearing mask, but while we, while we need them, we definitely need to need to share that. So, but yeah, please, please share that information on the chat. Uh, give us your email, phone number, best way to get a hold to you. And if, if, if you have not done that, now's the time to do that. Um, and, and we'll be able to make sure that we, we continue the access to those beyond this call. One of the things we did learn, uh, thanks to Jason Lamers, a genius guy in there. If you over on the right hand side of the, to the two, you see there's a little box that says three dots that says more, okay? And if you click on that more, you can actually download and save the chat. So I would encourage you that if you put your name in there and you wanna get a hold to anybody else that's already filled their information out there, just click save chat. So you'll have access to that now. Um, and you know, and if you need contact information beyond this call, if you didn't save the chat, it just saves it as a text file. So you can pull all that information down and, 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 and use this. Now, this honor the folks that are on these calls. Feel free to reach out to them, but make sure that you do it with you know, respect and courtesy because everybody's trying to figure out how they're going to be able to get to the next stage. Right. You know, do not push. We, we don't do pushy sales folks in GMA. Uh, feel free to offer and have a conversation. And if it's a fit, great. But, you know, pushy sales folks in GMA just do not mix. That's just not how we operate. It's, it's, it's a referral. It's a community that we support and respect each other. And, um, you know, that's just how we operate here. And so, so, so those of you that are just kind of getting engaged in the community, um, that's the, that's the standard. That's kind of the baseline. So thank you in advance for your, um, uh, um, like pushy salespeople. Bleh. Yeah. Well, <laughs> there's some out there that don't know that they are. And that's kind of scary. <clears throat> I will let you know if you call me and we'll, we will have, if I get a two or three phone calls, I will call you and let you know that you might have been put in that bucket. Thankfully, we don't have to do that very often. So with that, coming in the background, I don't know where that from. Okay, I found it. Um, with that being said, we're wrapping the call up. Um, uh, but again, we do thank everybody for being part of the call today and being engaged with us. Uh, this will be archived for your for your use in the future. If you have any questions, uh, oh yeah, yeah, great. Thank you, Roger. Survey says, everybody look this way, smile, smile, look this way. Hold on just a second, smile, wave. Everybody wave, make sure you see your hands. If I don't see your fingers, I wanna see all of your fingers, like all of them wave like that. There you go, sweet. Beautiful. Okay. So um, we'll be posting this out on social media. Please share, share it with your friends and, uh, and, and let them know um, that these resources are available to us and another great day at GMA. Love you guys. We'll see you on the next call. See you guys. Thanks Jason. Bye guys.